Gabrielle. You know what today is? Twin Flame Tuesdays. Twin Flame Tuesday. And boy, do we have some stories to tell about that, about even knowing what the day is when we get there. But for now, girl, it is so good to see you and welcome everyone to Twin Flame Tuesday. Yes, welcome. <laughs> it is Tuesday. Yes, it is. Um, so, girl, kind of start us off on what question you've had and why we're going to take the show in the direction we're going to go today. Well, um, usually, you know, this show is about Twin Flames, but not even just twin flames, it's about spirituality as well. So we we blend everything together because everything is together. It's above, it's below, it's within, it's without. Um, but today we're going in the regards of the energies that are coming up right now. What does that mean? And what does that even mean for twin flames? Because we've had a lot of different mixed energies that are coming up at play right now in the yeah. regards of twin flames. So um, people have been asking me about the energy of what CERN is going on. If you don't know what CERN is, CERN is um, the 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 organization that does the hydro collider, the particle collider. And so um, people's concern about that is because um, they can create microscopic black holes by doing that. Um, and then also people are concerned about the vibration effect of what they can have in our reality. And that goes into when people talk about the Mandela effect. They believe that is start, start up, is start stirring up by CERN because they're messing with, with particles and everything is energy and vibration. At our level, we are subatomic particles. So when you started messing with particles in the atmosphere and everything that is going on in the cosmos, it puts off a vibration into the whole cosmos of everything. So this is a concern that people have been having. And um, with that being said, I don't get into the fear-based narrative of any of that. And I've been teaching my clients and even my TikTokers and every, everyone else, don't get into the fear-based of that. You hold your frequency and align with what you came here to create. Align with that. If you don't know what you came here to create, it's time to do the work. It's time to do the internal work. Time to find out. Uh, time to find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to find out. So align with your frequency, hold your frequency, and create the life that you came in to create. Create the heaven on earth that we all came here as a child with that blueprint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So um, I, I guess essentially what you're saying is that I know that that's basically like this large tunnel that's created in a way that yeah. supposedly can contain this process so it doesn't affect, so as within does not affect as without. Exactly. <laughs> But the concern is that um, it's not contained within, that it does truly affect without. That's the mm -hmm. concern, right? That's the concern, okay. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, as you know, tarot world, <laughs> I just <laughs> put tarot cards. Um, the Ten of Wands historically has been about um, we're, we're carrying too many wands. We've got a burden here, and we should not be carrying it. Well, the other day, I had this reading I was led to, and of course, I'm led to them to learn, but I'm also led because occasionally they're for me, and, and I get the hit. This is for you. And I got, okay, you're too limited. You're only letting, like, one way of dealing with things come in. You're not letting all the ways come in. And it was a ten of ones in a different type of deck, but instead of the ones being out like this, they were all, like, in this little narrow bundle. Mm -hmm. And I saw that ten of wands, and I'm like, "That's not right." So what's mm -hmm. not right? You know what's? And they're like, "Look at that card, mm -hmm. and think about what the ten of wands looks like." And so I came in and I looked at this one, and I'm like, "Oh my God, I understand. We are supposed to be letting all of our light body in, and let it ground completely. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, it holds our frequency for us which is why i've been led to do the meditations the way i've been doing for a few mm -hmm. weeks now you know that yeah. um, about getting out of our own way our ego getting out of the way letting all of ourselves in letting the light in mm -hmm. and holding our frequency and, and you know I, all the stuff i've been told about holding our timeline this week before before you and i ever talked I didn't know they were turning the collider back on. I knew mm -hmm. about the collider, but mm -hmm. I didn't know they were turning it back. You know, I don't watch the yeah. news. Yeah. You know they're turning the collider back on. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that. So, um, so anyway, yeah. So we are going to ground and clear and all of that and and um, let in all of our light. So we're going to lead it in a little meditation to, uh, to open things up about how to hold your frequency. So everyone knows how to do that. And... Um, I've been having people like, as you know, I meditate with, I have several people I meditate with on a regular basis. And they're like, you know, I'm listening to that meditation more and more. 
you know, I'm, I'm letting in all that light and it's grounding me and I'm holding my frequency. And, and, and they're like, not sure what that means, but it's, it's, it's working. <laughs> you know? and I'm like, oh, okay, well just keep doing it. You know, your higher self knows what it means. Your higher self knows. <laughs> but, um, but uh, what I use to, I, I transmute all energies that are not feeling um, resonant with me. If I feel an energy that feels funky, if I'm feeling a little out of sorts, let's just go with that. If mm-hmm. I'm feeling not happy, if I'm like, I'm not feeling like my happy self because I'm the, you know me, I'm always mm-hmm. happy. Mm-hmm. If I'm not feeling that, I grab up the black tourmaline again. Thank you for the gift. It would, these were gifts, a very mm-hmm. nice gifts, by the way. <laughs> and um, I just hold this and I just transmute that energy. Even if I don't know what the energy is, if I can't recognize what's happening, mm-hmm. I just, Whatever is not for my best and highest good, get me out of my own way. Transmute that energy now to my personal frequency for my best and highest good. Unconditional love, of course, because that's what we're made of. Mm-hmm. And black tourmaline is perfect for that. Yeah. I have duramite and do- domalite, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Have- uh-huh, domalite. Mm-hmm. Right. For, um, for grounding. Mm-hmm. One you and I got and then the other one was a gift. Oh my gosh, girl, you hold these in your hands and you let yourself in. You tell uh-huh. yourself to come on down. Mm-hmm. You are, you are like glued to the floor. You are grounded. Okay. Yeah. And what we want to do is anytime we have something we want, anytime we ascend and we come back down, we want mm-hmm. to, we want to ground that experience. So many people think that ascension is about ascending and staying there. Mm-hmm. Ascension is about ascending finding out what it is our purpose is or, or finding out what it is we ascended for or whatever, but then it's coming back down and grounding that. So we then live it mm-hmm. because we are here for the tactile experience. Nobody's telling us that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't told that, you know, when I started ascending, I'm like, Oh, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. No. Talk about getting yourself confused because you just get more and more stuff. The yeah. more you send, the more and more they give you. And then yeah. down here, you're confused as can be. You're like, why, why is nothing happening? Well, because you're not grounding any of that, what that they're giving you. Yeah. And so, so we want our grounding stones. And so, of course, then if you have trouble connecting, of course, selenite. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have any trouble connecting, but, mm-hmm. but I have yeah. selenite too. So yeah. Yeah. some people do because some yeah. people are so grounded mm-hmm. that, that connecting is an issue. Mm-hmm. So whatever you need, these are the crystals you need. And so mm-hmm. Gabrielle and I teach that too. So, all right. So let's just um, close our eyes and just um, breathe deep into our bellies now. Take a deep breath into your belly and just breathe in the white light that is all around you. Unconditional love. Let it fill every part of your beingness. And then on the exhale, exhale all that does not serve. Just open yourself up to the expansiveness, to feeling the expansiveness of you. Just keep breathing in and out, in and out, and letting the light come down now through your stellar gateway, through your soul star, through your causal chakra, through your crown, through your third eye, through the throat chakra, through the high heart, and then the heart. Then the solar plexus, then the navel, then the sacral, then the root, and then ground it down through our earth star chakra, all the way down to the center of Mother Earth. And feel all the light that is you, that light body that is you, that source light that is you coming all the way down now. Mother Earth invited us here, each of us individually. We each have a purpose. We each have a mission. We each have that which we came here to do, which is to be the one and only us and have a heaven on earth experience. This light body that has unconditional love at its origin 
wanting to live out a tactile experience of unconditional love or heaven on earth. As we're all holding frequency to come back to oneness and raise the planet's vibration back up so that we can all have this experience because it takes oneness for us to do that. For each individual to have this experience, each individual must act in their unique oneness. Feel that grounded feeling as the light just keeps coming in. Let it come in, get out of your own way. Let the light pour down. Feel the, you can feel the heaviness of it coming down, the weight of the energy coming down, getting wider and wider. It's not just a small trickle, not just a tiny beam. This is a wide beam of light, as wide as your shoulders. Now even wider than that, coming down, coming down. Coming into the chakra system, permeating every cell of your beingness, grounding you. This is how we hold our frequency. We just keep letting the light come in. This is the light that is us. This is the light that created this tactile body that we're here in so it could have a human experience so it could be human and have heaven on earth. And as we're grounded to this now, breathe up pure clean energy from mother earth, breathe it up to your heart space. In the heart space is the intuitive mind where our guidance comes from so we know what our story is. We can trust this. This is where we know our purpose, what lights us up, what makes us happy, what makes us shine, what makes us bright. That's our purpose. Feel that energy within shine within and then share that energy with the whole world freely you being you is your greatest gift to the world you came just to be you and hold your frequency and this is how, let the light in, ground it, and share it with the world. And so it is, and so it is, and so it shall be. Namaste. Ashe Samana Beats. Okay. Wow, that was, that was, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. We got a lot going on, girl. Oh, we do. So when you said that meditation and you said the part about human being and the being, remember we talked about us being, being. beings, um, while, while you were saying that I kept getting human, H-U-M-A-N, H-U, the H is heaven, united man. Yeah. Heaven united man or heaven united with man? With man, yeah. yeah. Heaven, united, heaven with united with man. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Because that's what it is. That is what heaven, it is. Heaven created tactile man to unite the energy to come down, not to burden us, but for us to have beautiful lives because their life the, the light being an unconditional love, their life is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they want that experience here. Mm -hmm. But as we have become damaged, mm -hmm. that has come up mm -hmm. and, and made the load heavy all the way mm -hmm. up the ladder. Mm -hmm. 
So we've had to heal from all of that. And that's what we've been going through, bringing our vibrational frequency back up mm -hmm. all the way up from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's what we've been going through. And that's why we don't understand what holding the frequency means is we, we lost that connection, mm -hmm. lost that understanding, mm -hmm. lost that knowledge. And so we're becoming consciously aware of it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love that though. That is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're becoming more aware of ourselves. Of ourselves, we are learning again who mm -hmm. we are. Consciousness we becoming are. more aware of itself. Consciousness becoming more aware of itself. Yeah, we we are learning again who mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, um, and so much amazing stuff today. That is that is the journey that we're all on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as, as the whole planet as a cosmos mm -hmm. because we started out as unconditional love and we took this journey and we kind of discovered what chocolate was <laughs> you wanna, yeah. you explain that <laughs> well the way you explain you explain the chocolate part not going to the part <laughs> well you don't know what chocolate is until you taste it yeah and so energy was just energy it was, it was just primal energy. it was it primal, was primal. Primal yeah. energy, just raw energy. Just think of raw energy. But then it became conscious. Conscious. Conscious is light. Right. So now primal energy just wanted to keep multiplying and surviving. But so it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was It was just energy. Mm -hmm. Wanting to keep, it was just growing. Mm -hmm. Then it became conscious. And that means it had energy in motion there was emotion okay. there was intelligence so therefore we need emotional intelligence mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we need intelligence with emotions yeah but we hadn't tasted chocolate yet. we we didn't know what chocolate was yet so we, yeah. didn't, have, we didn't have intelligence about all the emotions because mm -hmm. let's face it chocolate is a comfort food okay? yeah, it is. <laughs> so, as we begin experiencing consciousness mm -hmm. or um learning things and experiencing our emotions, mm -hmm. we started finding out that, well, we're learning new things. And when you learn new things, you get into energy you did not know you were going to get into. Mm -hmm. So until you taste the chocolate, you didn't know what chocolate tastes like. Just like and a child. You're looking at it just like a child. A, just child, like just like a child doesn't yeah. know that, you know, if I jump off this porch or whatever that's high up, that I'm going to hurt myself or whatever they're doing, you know, until yeah. they do it. <laughs> So that's the journey. That's the journey. So we created all this ancestral path because we kept incarnating and incarnating and incarnating, experiencing chocolate in different ways. You know, okay, so hold on a minute. Our teeth get rotten if we don't brush our teeth. We get fat if we eat too much of it. We can put chocolate in this and oh, it tastes good. We can make it in that. We can do so all these things we can do with chocolate. But um, and then we'd figure out, hold on, that, that's not the best thing to do. So then we would go back up, we'd incarnate again, but we weren't clearing what we had done before. Mm -hmm. So the, the negative things, mm -hmm. if you will, the, although chocolate was good, the, the things that didn't turn out so well because of chocolate, you know, we yeah. got fat, we got rotten teeth, all those things, you know, but that yeah. kind of habit, yeah. um, those energetic DNA imprints were sticking to us. And they were sticking to our patterns too. And they were also, therefore, coming up our energetic, our energetic light body as well. They, they were in our energetic DNA. So every time we came back here, we didn't come back here with that story. That's not what we intended, <clears throat> but we still had the rotten teeth and we were coming back and getting fat. We still had the rotten teeth and we were fat and we were coming back and finding out, oh, and, and high blood pressure comes with that. And so we, we were just, we just kept digging yeah. a deeper hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The chocolate mm -hmm. still tasted great. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, but, but that's, that's what epigenetics is. When you talk about that's trauma, what epigenetics is. What epigenetics is. We're talking about trauma being passed on, being stored through generations. It's stored within our genetic DNA. It's stored within our blueprint. So we have to legitimately start the healing ourselves. And as we start to heal it ourselves, we start the healing the, the, the trauma, all the, all the other aspects that was in our lineages was, is in our blueprint. We were not flipping those switches off. We turned them on. Rotten teeth, turned it on. 
But, but when we incarnated again, we didn't flip that damn switch off. Okay. <laughs> so then we came and gain weight, flip it on. And we incarnated again. We left that switch on too. So we just kept incarnating and incarnating, expanding consciousness, not flipping off the switches for the things that we did not want to continue to expand. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are the denser energies that we're working out of now. That is what denser energy is about. And our primal part of us is all about keeping us safe. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, that is where limiting beliefs and fear come into to play. And so those are denser energies in a way because yeah. expansive energy, wanting to be lighter and lighter and lighter is saying, let's go this way. And the primal part of it is saying, mm -hmm. hold on a second. You want to do more with chocolate. We're fat. We're toothless. We've got high blood pressure. I mean, seriously, are we not through with chocolate yet? Hold on a second. It does taste good. Okay. Well, maybe we could do this one. What am I saying? You know, we're not doing well. Okay. It I mean, so we, yeah. we become schizophrenic about chocolate, you yeah. know, I mean, so, you know, uh, and, and so because we didn't turn off the right things, we mm -hmm. didn't have balance with it. Mm -hmm. We didn't leave the switch on to eat chocolate, but have a switch in us that, you know, we didn't create any balance with it mm -hmm. saying, okay, we're going to go back and tell ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah, don't, don't do this with chocolate. You can do mm -hmm. that with chocolate, but don't do this with chocolate so that we had balance. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't do that. So our journeys our journeys became burdensome because we just kept adding more and more on. Mm -hmm. But we, the switches that we were leaving turned on were keeping us from trickle. It, we just had a trickle of the light coming down because yeah. those energies were blocking. We were literally, wow. we were blocking the flow. Mm -hmm. And so that's now that we're healing those things, we're flipping those switches all off mm -hmm. societal programming, mm -hmm. the, all, all of that stuff. It's not all about chocolate, folks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, an, it's an analogy. <laughs> it's an analogy. <laughs> I, I love chocolate. And everybody who does this seems to. So it seems to work for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> in, our, in our world, in the spiritual world, I've been told, if people don't like chocolate, we don't trust them. <laughs> okay. So, so um, but seriously, we're flipping those switches all off. We're healing. We're progressing. And getting out of our own way means telling primal self, no, we're going to continue expanding consciousness with those switches flipped off. We did learn those lessons. Thank you for reminding us. We're flipping those off and we're letting the light in. We're grounding what it is we came here to do. Talk less, feel more. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about it. Feel the experience. Mm -hmm. That's how you hold your frequency. If you talk about it, you will invariably bring up not how good chocolate is and what the next experience with it is and ground it and go for it. Mm -hmm. Invariably, the primal part of you will say, well, and remember, though, we were toothless and fat and had high blood pressure and our frequency will drop. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is not holding the frequency. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we don't want to get into the energies of what the past used to be. That's why we disconnect. That's why we cut cords. That's why we do all of that. And that's why we keep the shell of the past to remember not to get back into those denser energies. Right. That's why we keep the lesson, but we don't keep talking about it and harping yeah. on it. And when you said the concern is these microscopic black holes, it was channeled to me. And I know people get touchy when you start talking space time continuum, mm -hmm. but in our plane of existence, we have linear time. That is how we measure things. Our sun goes, you know, our earth goes around the sun. It takes so many days, except mm -hmm. for light years or such and such. Mm -hmm. We measure things in linear time mm -hmm. in our plane of existence. Mm -hmm. So what it is beyond our plane of existence, I don't know. But mm -hmm. when you said um, that this, the collider being turned back on could cause microscopic black holes, what, a year and a half ago now, I was telling you how it was channeled to me that black holes were where we interrupted our space-time continuum, trying to rewrite things or change things that had already happened instead of holding the shell, instead of pulling the fragmented energy out and holding the shell, 
we were trying to rewrite the whole damn thing and we imploded it and that caused big black holes in space and so when you said that because i didn't know anything about it but when you said that i'm like oh my god <laughs> this is starting to make sense <laughs> so um so yeah so that's that's kind of Got, that kind of gets us up to where we are. So you want to run with all the science now? Because that's that's your stuff. I, I kind of got us there. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> well, you know, everything in this reality, I, I want us to get on the same uh, the same one accord. Yeah. When we talk about because when we when we on this channel, we talk about you know epigenetics, quantum physics, all this stuff. All this is in the line with spirituality. And this is what I love about these topics because they are expanding in consciousness. They're not just staying in the Newtonian, which is just physical based reality, consciousness. Right. Right. It's expanding. And we, we, what we've been talking about is about the ego mind and about how the ego mind, you know, we're integrating. This is what it's about. It's not about getting rid of the ego. It's not about, you know, um, trying to overpower and throw the ego out. We're, we're not meant to do that. We're meant to integrate with the ego. But as we talked before as a one-on-one, -on -one, and I've even said this about, I know this is about myself, but this is happening on a mass scale level. Um, I noticed the more that I integrate with my ego, my ego tends to get a little, and I even said this before, it gets, a, it gets a little tricky. It wants to get a little tricky, but not in a, we're not, it's not trying to be deceptive. It's just trying to protect me in this physical reality. I get it's it. doing its job. It's doing its job. It's, it's his job. Self, which this, protects us. This, this is job. So yeah. I get it. I get it and I, I get it and, and I love it because you're letting me live at this. You're allowing me to live at this tactile experience by me being able to be protected in certain areas. But that switch, we're not living in survival mode anymore. We're going into thriving. We're in thriving mode. So that same energy of the survival, like like animalistic, it's, it's more it's primal. It's primal energy. When you think about you know um, snakes and reptiles and all this stuff, you think about the primal of it. It's just survival, just survival. And, but we're meant to do so much more. We're extending, we're, we're becoming more like the universe is expanding, we're expanding. Consciousness right. is expanding, we're one with consciousness. Right. Um. So with that being said, for us to integrate with the ego, we have to be aware of the certain tactics that the ego might play. Yeah. With, within ourselves and with consciousness. And I love the way you say it because, um, because the ego does do this. When it gets to a level of consciousness, it gets, like you said, it gets comfortable there. It gets comfortable. We we are a species that, that are used to comfortability. You know, when, when we don't grow in comfortability, we never grow in comfortability. When you're comfortable, you're not moving. You're not you're not growing. And so we're a species that's, that's built up on comfortability. So when the ego is integrating, it's like, okay, yeah, I understand this. I got this, you know, and all this stuff. But then it's comfortable there. It's comfortable. It doesn't, it's afraid of the unknown. It's afraid of its expansion. It's afraid of how big it would get. Because in the beginning, there was just energy that was energy. Not, it was just primal. And it wasn't experiencing all this emotional conscious growth stuff. And this emotional conscious growth stuff, it's not so sure about. Mm -hmm. And it has caused some chaotic stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the primal part of us wants to avoid that. Mm -hmm. But energy by its very nature, universal law, it has to keep dividing and expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. So we can't stop that. Mm -hmm. We cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And so in its very nature, trying to protect us, it's actually setting us up to destroy ourselves. Well, huh. Yeah, it's creating a black hole. It's yeah. imploding it's, it's, it's itself upon itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's because of the fear. And fear. we know what fear Believe. is. That's yeah. what fear will do. Yeah. Fear will consume you so much until you can't see a way out. Girl, girl. Because <laughs> all this is the macro to the micro. micro. Yeah. Everything that the cosmos is experiencing and the expansion of consciousness is played out in humanity mm -hmm. not to torture humanity teach us a lesson none of that stuff it is because it is literally the cosmos the light bodies living through us learning as they're expanding consciousness mm -hmm. and they have they have grieved that they didn't know to shut the switches off on the journey mm -hmm. and that 
they have grieved, they have felt pain, they have, it has been a heavy burden for them that the light couldn't get in and that we've been carrying the load as society, as a human race, because, because universal law meant that once they figured out, hold on a sec, because they figured it out mm -hmm. a while back. Mm -hmm. Chocolate's rotting their teeth, chocolate's doing this, chocolate's doing that. But wait a second, like Bruce Almighty, we can't just jerk the moon and put it where we want to. No, that causes chaos within itself. <laughs> that causes chaos too. Yeah. So we have got to, we've got to unconditionally love. We have got to accept we did this. Mm -hmm. And we have got to accept this, this density that we created and not shame, blame. It's not the, common, it's the, not exact, common same, the exact same thing when we do when we do shadow work. Right. We love our shadows. We meet our shadows. We it's, see some aspects of them that that, that that we don't like about it. But we see that's why self-love is so important. You can't do shadow work if you don't do self-love work. That's why you can't on a max scale as above as below if you don't call in the unconditional love the light energy that you are you can't face the dark shadows because you don't you can't hold your frequency that is exactly it for the light to ever get back in for the light to come back down and embody as meant to it had to accept we screwed up we didn't know though we hadn't tasted chocolate before and we didn't know what chocolate would do now we know we can't just jerk the chocolate out. We got everybody addicted to it. Okay. Universal law. We can't do it. You know, so, you know, it'll be chaos and pandemonium. It'll be like jerking the moon. You know, it's universal. We, we can't do that. Yeah. So we have to raise the frequency this way and we have to come down this way. We have to, it's like the, the portrait of, you know, man and God meeting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at a certain point, this is what I found too. At a certain point, we reach because for years and years when we were in denser energy, it was everything we could do to connect. You know, we were always trying to connect up, always trying mm -hmm. to connect up. Mm -hmm. For a good while now, when I want to connect up, mm -hmm. one, when I want to connect up, who's doing that? That would be the ego. Mm -hmm. when I want to connect up. Uh. <laughs> okay. I would literally be pushing energy out of the way. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel everything, as you know, I feel all the energy movement within me, which mm -hmm. I know why, is so I can explain these things, but mm -hmm. it, it's a little tiresome. It's exhausting, yeah. actually. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not complaining, but it just <laughs> hit. You know, I, to come to center, I would literally have energy. I was pushing out of the way mm -hmm. and then pushing to connect up. And I'm like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And then finally, a couple of weeks ago, I got, get out of your own way. I'm trying to come down and ground. You've done the healing work. You're healed. Yeah. Well, enough anyway, because we're never totally healed because yeah. we're always, we're expanding consciousness. Mm -hmm. We're always going to be learning something new about chocolate. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so we're never totally healed, and but we're going to spiral upward and do it faster and faster and faster. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. We're going to get mm -hmm. out of our own way mm -hmm. and let the light in. Mm -hmm. But the ego was... But I have to connect up. No, we don't. Mm -mm. We would have never had to connect up to begin with if mm -mm. you hadn't have gotten into yes. the energy. Yeah, yeah. It's always meant to be. We are the vessel that the light was coming down to have the tactile experience in. Mm -hmm. So get out of your way now. Now that you've done the healing work and just let the light in. Let it ground and then do your divine feminine flow mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. balance with divine masculine energy of doing it'll mm -hmm. give, you, give you inspired action to do mm -hmm. and that is how we hold frequency mm -hmm. girl we have got to know what it is we are here to do we have got i got the other day trust the universe i got mm -hmm. that card and i'm like <laughs> i don't trust the universe who does and they're like, well, what's the universe? And I'm like, hold on a second. It's every everything is the universe. Everything, and everything yeah. that is in, in the universe is within each light being. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, every 
everything that happens in one light being is communicated to the other light being. So everything is always within every light being. So every light being has all of the universe within it. Oh, so that means that the universe is coming down within each one of us. Trust the universe means if you are letting your light being come down and ground, trust you. Trust thyself. So if that's sovereignty of self, that's why we want sovereignty of self. Mm. But we don't want sovereignty of self unless unless we're letting all of our light being in because we're sovereign over what? We're sovereign over what the ego, we're sovereign over the ego's fear-based primal yada yada mm. yada. Now we want to be sovereign over what the light being is telling us. This this is I'm up here, I'm unconditional love. I want this tactile experience of unconditional love down here. Coming through the heart space, listen with your intuitive mind. This is it. This is the beautiful life you're supposed to have. I'm you're the universe. I'm the universe. We're the universe. Trust, trust what you know. Let's hold the frequency. But what have we got bombarding us, telling us different frequencies, Gabrielle? Because yeah. that's what we so, and I, that's what started our conversation this morning. Is both of us on the phone going, girl, what happened to you this morning? Because both of us. Both of us had yes. the universe, had something telling us yes. different stories. Yes, yes. Um, so with the energies at play now, it's all about balance. It's about finding our balance. Yeah. So with that, you're going to have two sides of the coin. You're going to have the, the denser energy and the lighter energy. So right now, this is why holding your frequency is so we, we signed up for this. Like all the light workers, the healers that, that are watching this video, when we talk about what we came here to do, this is what we came here to do. We are legitimately in the cusp of it. So with the with the collider being turned on and everything like that, and since people aren't really watching the news and, and stuff like that, but this, this generation is shifting. This generation is completely yeah. shifting. We're not gonna let them feed us all that fear crap and put us in denser energy. Yeah. We're not gonna let them do that. No, no, no. So, completely that's another different. way to do it. Yes. <laughs> but with that being said, like you said, the, what was playing on an individual level with us is playing on a mass consciousness level. The ego, the ego of all of us, of the collective, is afraid to ascend. So with that being said, that's why even the Bible talks about false prophets, talks about, you know, energies that um, can be kind of be deceptive. And so you have to be very mindful. You have to have sovereignty over yourself to be able to decipher what you're listening to, if it serves your highest good or if it doesn't. And this is where a lot of people get in chaos because they don't know thyself. They don't know what they came here for. They just know what the society tells them to do. And that's it. I work, sleep, eat, shit, piss, and that's it. Girl. Have, have sex, that's it. <laughs> you know, that's it. But it's so much. Let's don't just throw that last part out. I wish <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not that's good too. No, but, you know. Just miss the last one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good too. But, but it's so much more. It's so much more. I know. It's so much more. It's just so much more. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yes, but it's it's so much more. And but we're waking up to that now. You see, people are not willing to work for pennies on a dime anymore. They're tired of being slaves to the system. Um, you know, we're right now in an era where it looks like women's rights are being, we're moving backwards as far as, you know, on a conscious level, as far as what women, what we can do. We're still not considered equal in the terms. This is where balance is so important because we've, our consciousness has been in one direction. We're shit. That's why when you hear about the divine feminine rising and all of us, she's rising each and every last one of us. The universe is masculine and feminine, not just masculine. It's, it's both. You can't have one without the other. And in this reality, we see it as just more one so driven. And so we even talked about it too. Remember when we did the twin flame um, podcast on, um, on, um, what was the app name? Um, we did it one time. Come on. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Had, remember, okay, remember we oh, had the guy. We had somebody come on that was yeah. like deep yeah. into this stuff. He was way ahead of us, uh, not ahead of us in yeah. thinking, but ahead of us as far as this is a this is the episode he should be on. He should be on. Yes. He yes. was talking. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I love that because we got it from the divine masculine aspect. Oh yeah. Um, yes. And remember, remember we got logging on talking this, and we were like, "Whoa, he's way ahead of where we are in terms of ready to talk about." Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. This is quantum leap. Yeah. 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 And yeah. coming from a mess, it was just it was it was a really beautiful, a really beautiful clubhouse. It really yeah, was. It was. Yeah. Um, and y'all should check it out. I'll put the link in below because I have it linked inside the link, so y'all can check out that episode that we did on Clubhouse. Um, but with that being said, we have a shift in consciousness because in some in some realities of consciousness that have um been on different planets and universes, they've been more in the feminine energy. Some has been more in the masculine energy. You see what I'm saying? But as we, cause, because consciousness had to expand. So when it expanded, it split itself up in twos and that energy vibrated across the universe. So some might have more masculine, some might have more, more feminine. Sure. But now we are coming back to center. All that is coming back to center and balance is so important. So right now, I said it to say, don't get caught up in the illusion of whatever fear is going on. Don't get caught up in the narratives. Because this morning we had some, some, some timelines that were trying to show up as a timeline that we are going to create, but we have sovereignty over ourselves to say, no, we're not agreeing to that. That's not the timeline that I came here with as a blueprint. I know what I came here with. I'm not agreeing to that. Um, now I'm going to let you talk about how yours, if you want to talk about how yours shifted, yeah, but for sure. me this morning, but for me this AM, I, I was like, okay, yes, yeah, today is Twin Flame Tuesdays. And I'm like, hold on, it's Wednesday. And I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe, you know, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night or whatever, but it wasn't that. It was just, I felt a shift in vibration trying to take me out of what I was trying to create. But, you know, I didn't have any fear about it because I'm like, okay, no. I, I know my energy. You know what I mean? I know my energy. Right. So right now, you might be feeling, a lot of people that I talk to, they are feeling a lot of energies inside of them that they don't even know what's going on. Some people are in chaos right now because they're not aware of their energy. When you have sovereignty over your energy and you're aware of what your fre frequency and your signature feels like, when these other energies come in and bombard you, they, they can't because you know your frequency. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We had, I didn't even know, I, I caught you on a TikTok the other day talking about we were in a portal. Usually mm -hmm. I know about portals. Yeah. Usually I'm the one telling Usually. you, hey, well, we're in a portal. But I, I didn't know we were in a portal. Mm -hmm. So a serious like, portal. I, yeah, I'm like, what portal are we in? Well, you know, you and I didn't get to talk until yesterday. You contacted me about something else entirely different. And I told you, one that all week I, I was shown this is our but we have reached this is it you have reached the healing to the point this is our best and highest good timeline this is it you're aware of what it is hold this frequency i mean my walks my you know my meditation hold this frequency this is it and i would get these little um like for lack of better words and people who are in our world are going to get it i would get these um hits that I knew were not the right hits. I knew they were egoic or or lesser um just uh more fear based collective, collective conscious energies but they were not the collective energies that were the right energies, okay? And that doesn't mean they were evil energies. It means it means that they were um thoughts that were up there that were not the right ones for me because mm -hmm. just because it's in the collective consciousness doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so so I would get them and I'm like, well, well, hold on a second. That doesn't align, you know, and I was like, that's right. You caught it. You're right. Hold your frequency. And I'm like, what is going on? Why am I? Because I felt like test and you know how I'm about tests. I, we don't get tested. We're here to we're here to learn, but it's not to challenge us or test us. Yeah. It's to learn. So yeah. I'm like, this, you know, this doesn't seem right. But, you know, I, I kept thinking I need to reach out to Gabrielle, but I hadn't. And so you had something happen to you that caused you to reach out to me. We ended up talking about that like five minutes and then we got on this. Yeah. And you're like, well, you do know we're in a portal and they're getting ready to turn the collider back on. And I'm like, what? And, I, and, I'm, and you're like, well, you know about that. And I'm like, no, I don't know about any of this stuff. <laughs> so you start talking and I'm like, holy smokes. Well, that makes sense. Well, then when you told me about the collider coming back on and about the Mandela effect where they believe that um, the collective consciousness after they turned it on the first time, describe the Mandela effect. You okay, so, it. so the Mandela effect, if you look it up, you can look, go research it. It's, um, it, 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 it's different timeline shifts. So if you think about everything as energy and vibration. Right. And where, you know, when we talk about quantum jumping, this is what we talk about with quantum jumping. We're talking right. about jumping to another timeline. Right. So look at it as just a, another frame in your picture, another frame. You're jumping up frames. 
and I love it. I love it. Um, I think it's his name is Bazaar. He's a channel. He, he gets channeled by this guy. It's the energy, a high energy being. He talks about it. It's frames. So I love, I love that analogy. So um, look at it as different frames. So what, what the Mandela effect is, um, if say for example, in our consciousness, um, one example I can give you is um, the whole fruit of the loom thing. The, the example I gave you. Yeah. Now. I know, I remember from when I was younger, the Fruit of the Loom had a little cornucopia thing on that. Well, now in our consciousness, it never existed. It's like it never existed. And you can find so many anomalies. And even even, even when you look at it as the multiple dimensions, the multiple worlds, everything happening at one time, if I think of a thought, I create another dimension, it even makes sense along those lines. Because if we're jumping timelines and we're jumping, if, if the vibration and particles are being thrown out of whack, they're vibrating to different vibrations and different timelines. So one timeline, the cornucopia could have been on there. The other timeline, the cornucopia could not have been on there. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's little bitty, little bitty differences in this reality that it's like, oh no, this isn't what I remember as. And as a collective, it's not just one person, because one person, but as a collective, it's like, no, that's not the timeline that I was on. I don't remember any of that. Which is, it's, and I know the people who don't like the term linear time, but the mm -hmm. way our plan of existence is set up, that is not how things go. Mm -hmm. And so when you mentioned that, mm -hmm. I I listened to you. And then after I heard you say it, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So then my conversation with the, my meditation person right after that was, you know, I think it's got more to do with like the hundred monkey thing. I think it's got to do with, one monkey washed their sweet potato off in one part of the world and another monkey saw it and then more monkeys started doing it. And then it got into the collective consciousness of the monkeys and all of a sudden around the world, all the monkeys were cleaning their food off. You know, mm -hmm. it's just we put the energy out there just like the orcas do with, you know, this is how we get food. And just mm -hmm. like the whales do, you know, it's telepathic or it's mm -hmm. put the energy out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even really take that seriously, that the collider mm -hmm. coming on today mm -hmm. could alter timeline. <coughs> you know, I was like, Okay, I see why they think that, mm -hmm. but nah. And I, and what I told you was, and if it can do that, the universe is going to use that for positive to jump mm -hmm. to the right right timeline. It's it's not going to be. There's, there's nothing negative going to come from this. I'm yeah. not I'm not worried about it because I no. don't buy into the whole negative. You know that. Me either. Yeah, me either. So, and then I let it go. Mm -hmm. I didn't think another thing about it. <coughs> but you know, I'm I'm very aware of what my timeline is. I'm yeah. very aware. Yeah. So I got up this morning and all of a sudden I start getting this. Okay. Sorry, folks. Bullshit timeline stuff. Okay. I draw a card and I, I get this, this crazy. Um, let me see. How was it? How was it put to me? Uh, let me see. I've got it here. We have stopped settling for family. That is not really the right family for us. Mm -hmm. And we started creating our own families. This is true. I teach it all the time. You know, don't don't be with family because you should be with mm -hmm. the family that lights you up, that mm -hmm. you are drawn to, that you're attracted to, et cetera, et cetera. Then it extrapolated and it said, and stop doing it with your twin flame. If your twin flame is not going to be your twin flame like they're supposed to, stop putting yourself through that. And I'm like, hold on a second. I know for a fact why twin flame are here we are here one because we do light each other up and we want to be together we want to heal and be together but two because oneness divided to experience unconditional love but replication of unconditional love was not it it wanted to co-create and co-creation meant twin flame that you know divided twin flame mm -hmm. and now we come back to oneness Mm -hmm. Right, divine feminine, divine masculine. Mm -hmm. Now to come back to oneness, which is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're healing all this stuff we talked about. We're healing from mm -hmm. discovering chocolate. Mm -hmm. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. okay. so, but to do that, the twin flames have to come back together and learn that we're whole and complete in and of ourselves. We can each eat chocolate, mm -hmm. but we can agree on how to do it without having all the wrong switches turned on. Mm -hmm. And you can have your path, I can have my path, and we can have our path together. And we can co-create, continue to expand consciousness but do it in a way that is harmonious and beautiful and high vibrational. And we don't have to be fearful of it caught in our primal dense energies. We can bring our primal dense energies with us and listen to the cautionary part, but not be limited by it. Mm -hmm. So we keep the shell, but we don't stay in that energy. And so I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. So this 
notion of that there is a, that what you can extrapolate from one to the other, that is not my timeline. I am not to abandon my twin flame journey over that. I'm to continue to hold my frequency so that, you know, and I can't control what my twin does. That's true. And I'm not to be unhappy. I'm not to like, you know, but we talk about the twin flame union yeah. is about going back to sovereignty of self energy. Sovereignty of self and to be happy, happy et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. what this looks like when that timeline is trying to break that coming back to sovereignty of self, yeah. that is just the ego of the collective afraid of the expansion that happens because it yeah. brings harmony in our collective. It brings harmony throughout throughout eons. And we, we see it all the time. Yes. We talk about the divine feminine and masculine coming together, creating a whole new energy. Even when we have children, we have a divine masculine and feminine come together, create a whole new energy. A whole new the the, the yes. whole new dimension, dimension, a child, the Holy Trinity. So this aspect of this energy coming in, which is the ego of the collective coming in because it's at a comfortable place. It's like, okay, well, we can talk about spirituality. Now we're not getting lynched and hung yeah, because yeah. we're talking about this kind of stuff. You know, we can openly, we're experiencing more, but we're afraid. What if we go up too far? Let's we've gotten right. really comfortable with, we've gotten really comfortable with, you know what? I, my family doesn't resonate with me. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will be family with them as much as I can be, as long as it's healthy for me and mm -hmm. they have my parameters, boundaries, mm -hmm. whatever term you want. Mm -hmm. But my family, the people I'm close to, the you know, I will decide those for myself. We've mm -hmm. got the ego has gotten very comfortable with that. Yeah. You know, so the ego's like, so I'm gonna keep everybody safe now. We're gonna extrapolate that on out to twin flame world. And we're gonna tell twin flame world that. And who better to do that with than the one who's screaming from the top of the lungs, no, that's not what twin flames here for, you know? And but I, but I've seen that. Remember we talked about that last time. I know, that's something I know. That's coming up in the consciousness. We've seen. I've seen other people talk about twin flames and talk about what well, twin flames are not here for. That I'm like, oh, we I talked about that in the episode. Morning, before. I yeah. heard it this morning. And, you know, I, this is. But all week, you know, of course, Metatron is new channels to me. Mm -hmm. All week it was. This is your timeline. Hold your frequency. Hold your fre frequency. You know how important it is. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean my twin does what. I think my twin should do. It doesn't mean that at all, but it still means I hold my timeline. Mm -hmm. It means I hold my frequency. Mm -hmm. So this morning I'm getting ready and everything I come across is how twin flame are just here to spiritually awaken one another and grow. That's all they're here for. And I'm like, what the crap is this? That is not what we're here for. We are here to bring the universe back to oneness. <laughs> Which doesn't mean everything implodes on itself and we all go back to being one big, great, massive thing. Mm -hmm. That's not it at all. The universe values our uniqueness because that's how it expands consciousness. It wants to expand consciousness in a healthy, high vibrational way, which Twin Flame is a model for. If we abandon Twin Flame journey, we abandon doing that. So damn straight I'm going to hold my frequency. My twin may not step into it, but you can damn straight believe I'm going to. Yeah. That is what I'm here to hold the frequency for. Yeah. And I will be healthy, happy, whole, and complete doing it with or without my twin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll have mm -hmm. an amazing life doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to hold my frequency, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to fall into a lesser timeline. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. I'm and not going to do it. And when you said that, I want to say something, because... I get it. And I'm so glad we have two different energies here on this channel because we have a person that twin is still here, but not in union. Yes. We have a person that's twin is not here, but is in spiritual union. Right. And the beautiful thing, first I want to say for the twins that have crossed over, I know it is hard. I know, I know it is hard, but we came here to live out the other aspect of this journey. Yes. The blueprint of the other aspect of this journey. The twins that I talk to all the time, even if they aren't even consciously aware of everything that's going on, they, they come to me and they ask me and they're like, okay, I'm getting these signs from my twin, you know, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, that is your divine counterpart. Yeah, you're going to be getting signs from the other side and stuff like that. But they get so caught up, and I get it because I was there too, in the loss of the physical vessel of their twin not being here. And I just want to say to the twins, the twins that have crossed over, the twins that are inside my Facebook group, the ones that I don't even know, whoever sees this message. If your twin is not here in this physical vehicle anymore, 
you are still meant to hold your vibration. You are still meant to expand consciousness because what's happening is that just because your twin isn't physically here, you all are, you guys are still doing the work. You all are, guys, energy talks first. Like we've, I've, we've talked about this on my channel several times. I, my twin cleared something on the other side that we weren't able to clear in this physical yeah. vessel that he cleared. And I felt the vibration of it and went through it myself and cleared my portion of it in a dream that I had, you know. And so this is all energetic work. This is all the universe. This this isn't some hokey pokey shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's just. It's just we're becoming more aware and we're in that's why I love about quantum physics and everything like that, because they're starting yeah. to understand and break it down. So our conscious mind can understand the spiritual woo woo aspect of it. <laughs> we've got we've got numbers and graphs and, and and equations and we've got the oh, wow, that sounds like it might be sacred geometry or yeah. something there. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that. To yeah. back it all up. Absolutely. Yeah. And. I get it. I'm I'm 57 years old. I'm still, in my idea, a young woman. Mm -hmm, how, mm -hmm. how many years do I hold this frequency? And maybe my maybe my twin never comes. Do I live a life by myself? Do I, you know, no, I don't do that. I'm not doing that now. I mean, I, I spent five hours at Applebee's Friday night. I had a damn good time. I was out yesterday. You know, I'm not I'm not standing still doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm holding a life and I'm having a life, but I know. I know what I'm ultimately here for. And mm -hmm. if that happens, I will hold the frequency for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But it also means holding your frequency means you live your your you live a full, complete life now. And that person either they hold their frequency and they step into the timeline and the two of you get together or the two of you don't. But it doesn't mean that you just up and abandon and tell the collective to abandon twin flame journey, it's too hard. Abandon. It's not like abandon ship because it's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not like that. It's not like that at all. No. It is, it's just not that. It's not, well, you know, just like family can be too hard. And so pick your own family. Twin flame's too hard. Just go pick somebody else. It is not that at all. And, and even, even, with fa even with family, it's not even that it's too hard. It's just that you have sovereignty over your energy and you're not going to allow people that are not aware of their energy to disrupt the sovereignty you have over your energy. Exactly. And the truth of the matter is that is the best thing you can ever do for your twin anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want your twin if you being in your energy is not mm -hmm. how your twin wants you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the relationship isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have to go and pretend to be something you're not to be in union with your twin, that relationship isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's and not. the truth of the matter is, if you have to go into a different vibrational frequency than self, you're going to be miserable too. Mm -hmm. Twin flame mm -hmm. journey is not the, it's not going to be at the vibrational frequency. It's not going to be the highest and best good for both of you. Mm -hmm. So you have got to hold your frequency mm -hmm. and either the two of you find that frequency together or you don't, but you don't, you don't sacrifice that. You don't sacrifice mm -hmm. what your frequency is and what you know the truth to be, mm -hmm. you know, out of, out of fear. Out of fear. Out of, <laughs> oh my God, it. I'm getting older. What if this doesn't happen? What? No, you go by inspired. Actually, you go by your heart space. And if you, if you do meet that other person that the universe has said, okay, we have watched and watched and watched. This isn't happening. That twin is not going to do it. This person, the butterfly effect here is that person is a very close energetic match. We're going to put them in each other's path. Then your heart space will know. Your energy coming down will fill your heart space with, okay, granted, there's nothing like your twin, but this energy is on the planet now and it resonates so closely to yours. And we've put this energy in your path. And I'll be damned if you're going to gone through all of this, not to be healthy, happy, whole, and complete. You're not here to be alone. Mm -hmm. And if your twin is not going to come into frequency with you, then this is better. Mm -hmm. We're going to make damn sure you're happy. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Then we're mm -hmm. going to make sure this turns out better. Mm -hmm. And that will happen. But that happens by you holding your frequency and being who you know you are. But when you look at it on a grand scale, that is what's happening in the cosmos. That is what that is what the universe is doing. The universe isn't coming down here to meet us. It's no. holding this frequency and saying, y'all, and the universe is not afraid because it knows 
the creator is not afraid because it knows that it's expanding. It knows it's, it's learning about itself. It knows that this energy it got into is it knows it's not going that. And wherever the aspects of our stuff down here, whatever we're playing and doing, it's not going to allow that. It's holding its frequency and said, "Okay, kids, you're playing, but it's holding its frequency. Come on, meet me here." Even like with our children, when our children are doing stuff, being chaotic, you know what I mean? You know, we don't we don't get out of our energy or whatever when they're chaotic, and we hold our energy. We even see it with them. They come and meet us at a level. But when our energy gets chaotic, what happens? Is the whole situation is chaotic. <laughs> so, and that's that's the reason why we had to come up to meet them mm-hmm. at a certain point. Mm-hmm. And once the healing got to the point that they could ground all the way, mm-hmm. then they're holding that frequency. Mm-hmm. It's like we're here. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, denser energy which is the fear, limiting belief mm-hmm. energy, mm-hmm. we're holding right here. We're mm-hmm. not budging. Mm-hmm. We're not budging. Mm-hmm. That denser energy is going to come up. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. denser energy is going to dissipate. Mm-hmm. And lighter and lighter, higher vibrational energy is going to overtake the collective energy. And better and better decisions are going to be made worldwide all the time. Mm-hmm. Because more and more of this energy is going to be coming all the way down and grounded and it's going to be flowing all the way back and forth all the way back and forth as more and more healing is done and people's egos or limiting beliefs get out of the way and that's what we're doing this is paradigm shift we are connecting heaven and earth with the energy that's supposed to be there and we are holding the frequency and we're not going to we're not going to change it and that's the same thing twin flames are doing. Mm-hmm. We're not going to give up the frequency. Mm-hmm. Now, if if the twin doesn't join us, they don't join us. Mm-hmm. We are we will be guided to a life that is happy and healthy for us. Mm-hmm. And it may be with another person. It may not be with another mm-hmm. person. I, I don't know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. For everybody. Everybody's individual and different. Right. But mm-hmm. I do know this. I do know that waking up it was freaking bizarre because i had no clue about the stuff you were talking about Mm -hmm. but all last week i just kept getting this is the timeline hold this frequency Mm -hmm. and i was like i need to talk to gabrielle i need to talk to gabrielle and then you called about (laughs) at first of all let's let's just let's just get i want to get into that a little bit i want to get yeah yeah because because even this is what i want you guys to see because i don't want people to get i don't want people to be afraid right the dark right so I want to bring this up as an example of how things come into your life. I even say all the time, even the dark is working for the light and doesn't even know it, you know. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, even the dark is working for the light and doesn't even know it because it's just primal, unconscious energy that is just moving and doing things and not even aware of But the light knows how to navigate these energies and still make it work out for the highest good. That's why you always say when stuff is in chaos, this is still working out for me for my and my highest good. And if you visualize it and see that, you will get moved out of that chaotic energy into a more high vibrational energy. And that is because the light will not stop bringing the darkness back in because mm-hmm. the light feels like mm-hmm. consciously knows mm-hmm. we got into chocolate and we didn't know what that was and we left switches on. We shouldn't. And so the light is, the light is always going to self-correct. It's yeah. always going to course correct. Yeah. Like a GPS. Right. So the light is never going to abandon the darkness. No. The light is going to fix what it did. Mm-hmm. And so the light is the light. The light acknowledges the darkness as mm-hmm. that's a part of me when I didn't know better. Mm-hmm. Let me love it back into place. Yeah. Let me love it back into place. That's what shadow work is. <laughs> that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And so yesterday I had a big thing. I woke up. I never wake up and jump on Facebook or anything know, like that. You know, and as soon as if I do wake up and jump on anything, it might be TikTok because when I open up the algorithm knows me, it shows me what I need to hear right then and there. So I never open up Facebook because Facebook has a lot of energies everywhere. So I opened it up and all of a sudden it says your ad has been approved. I'm like, my ad has been approved. I hadn't did a paid ad. And then I went, I said, let me get up out of bed. So I got up out of bed. I was a little bit, eight o'clock is late for me. You know, I'm up usually early in the morning. So I got up out of bed. I went to Facebook and I'm like, okay, let me figure out what's going on. Make a long story short. It was some kind of account that made an ad account on my account. And it wouldn't let me delete it. It wasn't, it was like, I, I like I didn't have any rights to it. And my account has never been, I have two way authentication system up. It's never said my account has been hacked or anything like that. So I'm like, how does this person get access to my ads? And I can't even delete this person, you know? So it's no way to contact Facebook or anything like that. 
And so we talked about it a little bit, you know, and in the old me would have got out of, my, out of my energy. But see, this me, I stuck in my vibration. I said, let me call Maisha because this has happened to Maisha before. So let me call Maisha. So the way I, this is why I said the dark is even working for the light because me and Maisha has been saying internally, we need to talk. We need to talk. Yeah. Every time we talk, we get pieces of the puzzle, downloads I've had, downloads you've had, and we put the puzzles together. Every so we've time. been so busy with, you know, doing stuff, everything we have going on, we haven't took time to talk. So this happened, and even yesterday I made a video, I'm in a posting it, and I sent love to whoever that person was that did that to my account. I was able to deactivate it, it says it's going to take two days, but the person still had somebody else's credit card on file. So I made a video showing just in case they try to come back at me and say, I charged this person credit card. No, this was not me. This was this fake account that got into my account that I don't even know how I got into. But even with that being said, I sent love to that energy and said, this is for my highest good. Even when we got, even when we was on the phone yesterday, I said, you know what? This, what this, this is what happened. This is even the dark working for the light. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because what it identified for us in the long run is, mm -hmm. Our ego, which we have not abandoned and are not going to abandon because it is a part of us. It is the primal part of us meant to protect us. It's coming up in frequency, too, and it's getting more and more clever. And it is saying, yeah, yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. Hold on a second. This is a good place to stop. Yeah. And we can't fall for that. Right. We have to hold our frequency and keep expanding consciousness because divine feminine energy is expansive. Yeah. It's the energy, divine feminine energy is the energy that is created at everything that is created in this universe is made of the divine feminine energy. She is the expansion. She is the particles of everything. The divine masculine energy is what makes it, what is, is, is this energy of creating something, of me creating this computer, of me focusing that energy of the divine feminine, her vastness, taking it and focusing on something to create something. And then the divine feminine picks up, picks up that and she nurtures it and cultivates that seed. So they're always interchangeably working together. You can't have one energy without the other. And the light does not want to abandon the yeah. denser because it's not, it doesn't want to see it as denser. It wants to bring it up equal to it and get on mm -hmm. the same page. It wants mm -hmm. to say, okay, primal you, primal mm -hmm. me, primal us. Mm -hmm. Understand that expansive does not mean bad. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge your role as, as being programmed to know what we did before and that, okay, we didn't switch off the switches when we mm -hmm. should. But I need you to stop screaming the sky is falling. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which is done. It yeah, did. no, no. Instead of doing that, it just got real clever and said, yeah, this is good. Let's stop here because look, we, this is this is what we're supposed to do now. It was a higher, I mean, it used exactly what I tell people. You know, if this isn't working, you shouldn't should yourself. You should be happy. Family doesn't work. You give energy to family, but you only give so much and you 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 find somebody else, you know, you do this. So abandon that timeline you're on and you do this, you know, and it's like, no, I had all last week of every, every bit of my energy coming in, telling me whatever you do, this is our timeline. This is our best and highest good. Do not abandon this frequency. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I'll be that gum. I woke up on Monday morning getting a message Abandon ship, abandon ship. I'm like, what? I know. It's like it's like when you know, like when we see stuff going on that is chaotic and we don't want to deal with that energy, and we're like, oh no, 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 no. That's why a lot of people when they get into the healing process, when it's yes, that's why because they can get if you don't do the self-love work before you get into the shadow work and inner child healing work, this can cause more chaos within you. And this is how some people get lost along the healing journey because they didn't sit there in the vibration of unconditional love of themselves. They didn't sit in that vibration before they started saying, hi, shadows. I learned about shadow work. I'm going to meet you. Oh, but you ain't ready to meet the shadow yet. <laughs> Hold on. Because, you know, you're not for everyone because this was my next card. You're not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness. Face your true north. Okay, what I've got to say isn't for everyone. Not everyone is ready to hear, hold your frequency. Not everyone's even understands what frequency is yet. They're not there yet. Mm -hmm. But for me, this morning, I woke up with this chaotic energy in the air. And it was like, no, 
you know, when whenever you and I finally, you know, you mm-hmm. called and you're like, well, girl, I got up this morning, da 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 da. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I got up this morning, but neither one of us were. We were more laughing about it yeah. than anything. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, we were more laughing about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, you know, I didn't see it coming. I was still, it's still a 100 monkey thing. You know, it, it's, <laughs> and I still don't know it's got anything to do with the lagger. But I do believe the energy we're in, the serious portal, it's big time, it, creative, intuitive, um, finding your path energy. And my higher self, most definitely, and the higher selves of the collectives right now are like, find our intuitive path, find our, find our highest and best good. Oh, that's, that's a little overreaching. Let's, let's dial it back down about, as I would say, 14 notches, you know? Yeah. And, um, but, but you know, it even yeah. makes sense because we're in the age of Aquarius. What has been in the age of Aquarius, this portal, this serious portal is about the light energy coming in. It's about our spiritual sun, our spiritual sun. And yeah. even in the cosmos, if you watch the, if you watch anything scientific in the cosmos, they, every time you look up, every week I look up, they're saying, okay, the sun, the sun is doing something, messing up technology. So if y'all are having issues with technology, this is what's going on because the sun is producing a lot of energy and that energy is hitting earth, but it's hitting earth for our highest good, for our highest. If you look at it in the regards of, for you to heal anything, you have to bring it to the surface. And that's why we're seeing all these different shifts in the collective. It's like, dang, we're going backwards. We're not really not going backwards. We're bringing this stuff up to the surface that has not been healed. We've just been pushing it under, pushing it under the rug. It's no more pushing. That's not. That's not. That's how we get into trouble anyway. Even internally, we push our emotions. <laughs> Repressive emotions, acting like if if I just if if I just ignore it, it'll go away. Or that whole if it's supposed to be well, it will be. Yeah. No energy in motion. Motion, energy. emotion. Yeah, and if you just let energy just go willy nilly, and you don't have intent with it, if you don't let, if you don't listen to the heart space, and go with the intuitive mind, inspired, inspired action, then the primal mind will take mm-hmm. you on the limited belief action. Mm-hmm. You will pick one path or the other. Do you want yeah. the limited belief path and settle for less? which is what they tried to get me to do this morning. Yeah. Or do you want to go for what the heart mind says? This is what you're supposed to go for. This is your path. Mm-hmm. You know, do you want all the happiness you're supposed mm-hmm. to have or do you want half of it? And that's I, what Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about, the brain and heart coherence. Right. And I, I love his work. Um, he's, he's, he's an expert in his field. But he talks about the brain and heart coherence. He does study. He has scientific research study that proves when you're able to connect on a deeper level with your heart and able to get these two energies to work and coherent with each other, you are able to heal. Like he does a lot of work in the healing aspect of the body, but he talks about it because you, you heal more than just your body, your whole eternal reality. But he talks about it in the regards of you're able to heal cancer, anything that's going on genetically in you. He has studies where people have been to seminars and healed their, they've been healed because of the energy they're having this brain this brain and heart coherence and you can legitimately see it on the screen when they're about to pop it's like a aha awakening moment within them so he has scientific research to prove this aha moment that happens inside of us which is the high heart which is in between the two mm-hmm. which is like fifth dimensional the thymus heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is like fifth dimensional so mm-hmm. the other one i got was shower of blessings which is all of the light coming down and then open yourself to receive it. Get out of your way. Let the light come down. Then pay it forward. The way we're paying it forward is by holding our frequency. Because when we all hold our frequency, we're holding it for ourselves. But we're holding it for the whole planet. Yeah. Because as I said, every time we hold frequency, the frequency in the collective goes up. Mm-hmm. And decisions worldwide will get better and better and better yeah. and that is the paradigm shift we that, don't we don't break this mold by trying to go and make them do this make the system same those systems are in place we you know we, we've done and we, we've seen that it, it doesn't really get anywhere they, they become more clever their mind becomes more clever clever 
But when we're able to hold our frequency, energy talks first. Energy is what creates, creates this physical reality. So if you can do this on an energetic level, you might not even see the vibration of what you're doing. But I promise you, there's even studies that prove when people get together in mass meditations, they shift the vibration of the world. They shift the vibration of that area. They, and the more people vibration that raise and get higher and higher and higher, it shifts the, the dense energy. A hundred monkeys. The more people are going to be washing their sweet potatoes. <laughs> but for twin flame world, what this man? No, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't help it. It's just in me, girl. I'm so mad. I love it. What this means for twin flame world is, though, for each of us, hold your frequency. What it's going to mean in the end that your twin does, I don't know. But it means you're going to be doing your highest and best good. It means you're going to be the, have the best timeline you can possibly have. And it means that your higher self is going to be looking. And that energy that is all the way up can see. Yeah. And at some Earth point, view. yeah. And at some point it will know. And it's communicating with your twin's higher self. They're connected yeah. there. Yeah. And they're communicating. And it's mm -hmm. going to be, okay, mm -hmm. I, it, this one's just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's not going to be. You're not going to get some message like this that's going to break your heart and say, give it up, girl. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's not what's going to happen. You're going to be lit up with something that is so much better because that's how we that's what causes us to. To manifest, to to allow something in to begin with is it lights our heart space up. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to be something. They're going to have to find something that lights you up as much or more than your twin does mm -hmm. for you to let that in. Mm -hmm. They're going to make sure you're happy. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to send me a message that say, okay, it's mm -hmm. time for the heartbreak. Give it up, girl. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, okay, you know, come over here. Look at this. And, and something's going to come into my life, a person, a whatever, mm -hmm. that's going to light me up so much that that disappointment is not going to matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be healthy, happy, whole, and complete, and just freaking fine. And that is, and I'm so glad you said that. You you just brought. I'm so. Oh, well, I'm so glad you just said that. that. And that is, but that is how we hold our frequency. Yeah. Not, not with disappointment coming. Yeah. 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 Because that's that's the whole test mentality. Oh, yeah. the test is that I've got to I've got to I've got to give up on my twin flame because he was only here for me to have this spiritual lesson. And now I've got to find somebody else that's going to, that I can just be happy with bullshit. Mm -hmm. No, if your twin flame is here and they don't want you, you can damn well bet. They're going to give you something that's going to light you up more than that because mm -hmm. they, we are not here to settle mm -hmm. that light being that is me has heaven up there. They have unconditional love. They intend to have heaven on earth in this body too. Mm -hmm. And if the twin is not going to join them, mm -hmm. they're going to make a way mm -hmm. for me to be just as happy here. Mm -hmm. And I know that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm supposed to hold the frequency of. Mm -hmm. Not yes, so that that twin can heal and hopefully we get together. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that the collective comes up and understands that one plus one equals three, all mm -hmm. of that. But also because... That's what we're meant to do is have the heaven on earth experience, every one of us. And mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to settle for less than that. And if I had accepted this paradigm that was handed to me today, mm -hmm. this was gut wrenching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, want, you want me to do what? You want mm -hmm. me to go out and find what? Mm -hmm. You want me to settle for what? You want me to do what? No. Mm -hmm. If the universe has something better for me, it's going to come in. And it is going to light me up, and I'm going to know it when it happens. And, and that's, that's, how, that's how you do what, 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 what inspires your soul, what, what brings out that inner child, that, that wonder, that awe, and that expression. That is what you came here to do. That, 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 is, that is your fun. That is your higher self living and, and feeling this experience. Now, when things start to get in fear, claustrophobic, um, telling, telling you to go stray another way and this, this, and that, and it's not alignment with what you know, what you know for sure, that is, this energy is that doesn't serve you. And I'm so glad that you said um, in the regards of when you said, you know, this is what, the universe is going to give you something higher and better. And I can speak that true from my aspect of my twin not being here. Yes. My twin is not physically here anymore. So at that point in time in my life, you know, I'm, I was like, I remember I told you before, I wasn't suicidal, but I was like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And 
Um, and you know, spirit will, will give you information in different ways. So I, I remember telling them before, um, it was the 11th month when I thought I was going to leave this physical existence, but I did have a, a death. I have a, a sort of, uh, an ego death. I had to go through this process. Uh, and that's when I was in the mental hospital I had to go through this process of letting those old dis energies shed and fade off. And that's what happened. And this timeline that I'm on now, it fills my soul. It oh, girl, fills you're lit up it. all the time. You are <laughs> lit up all the time. <laughs> it fuels my soul. And I'm not saying I don't know what, what could have happened when my when my twin would have stayed here. But I don't I can't live in that energy because this is the timeline that I'm on. And whatever in uh, whatever other reality we're playing out and living, my higher self knows all that. I, that's not for me to be a concern of. I'm still here in this tech <laughs> experience and the universe is giving me so much stuff like I'm not even at the cusp of everything that I came here to do. Right. Right. And, and it fuels my soul to be able to help other people fuels my soul to be able to, you know, discover more about me fuels my soul to be. It's just so much in this reality that if, and even my twin isn't here. We still communicate all the time. You know, that right there in itself fuels my soul because we're doing this from two different dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. It is about shower blessings. Open yourself up to receive. The universe is going to give you something that lights you up like that mm -hmm. and then pay it forward. Now, I had somebody say to me a while back, you seem to have found exactly what you love. Mm -hmm. And I do love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. To say that I have found exactly what I love, I love lots of things. Mm -hmm. I know what lights me up. Mm -hmm. I know what I want in my life. Mm -hmm. And, but I do know this, that if my paradigm needs to shift, the universe will light me up and will change it. Mm -hmm. But that's how it'll change. It, will, it, change. it will not change driven from a fear mm -hmm. or, or anything like that. It won't, it won't change that way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how we hold our frequency is knowing the difference between fear-based, limiting belief, those kind of things. What you see? Girl, a hummingbird is right here. Oh, coming high oh my gosh <laughs> bird, birds are a spiritual thing for me you yeah, know? Yeah, birds are a spiritual thing for me yeah we'd have had yeah so rise above the chaos rise above the fear and and um hummingbirds bring in that inner child we just haven't been talking about what 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 it's what excites you that creativity that's the energy of hummingbird so that's just <laughs> thank you mother nature <laughs> I guess we're at like 121. So I guess we can end it with amethyst because that was the stone they gave me this morning. And amethyst is about um, magic exists in life's interstitial spaces. Interstitial being between the breath. Okay. Between the inhale and the exhale. As Elizabeth Kipp says, we're born on an inhale, we die on an exhale. That is what life is. The magic happens in our lifetime yeah we were told to talk less feel more mm -hmm. create the magic in your lifetime by feeling mm -hmm. by going with the intuitive mind mm -hmm. that's where we create the magic from mm -hmm. not by getting into our head and ruminating with ourselves and listening to the limiting beliefs because that's where the talking happens. Mm -hmm. How much freaking self-talk do we do telling ourselves, I can't, I can't have that. I don't deserve this. I have to wait for that. Mm -hmm. I should do this. I've got to do mm -hmm. that. We can move along positive timelines and have the things we want and still be responsible people. Mm -hmm. It can be expansive and still be responsible. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things. Amethyst is about healing amethyst is is I mean, it's, clear, it's clear light mm -hmm. clear stone mm -hmm. which got heated up got lit up and it became purple okay mm -hmm. that's the violet ray and that transmutes everything so that means whatever you have going on that is not working out unconditional love got so lit up that it became purple to transmute all of it and say, we can take whatever that is, <coughs> you can release the parts that no longer serve. We can mm -hmm. transmute all that and turn it into what will 
Mm -hmm. You can be this wonderful, responsible, good person, et cetera, et cetera, and still progress in your timeline. That's what Amethyst is about. It's about it's about the clear light of unconditional love going all the way to freaking purple and saying, you are royalty. Yeah. You are energetic royalty. Mm -hmm. We have come down from heaven to be on earth and have heaven on earth. And don't leave yourself out in the sun. Don't leave yourself hanging. Don't don't listen to the limiting beliefs because all the all the purple fades away then. Because when you put perp when you put amethyst back in the sunlight, mm -hmm. the sunlight yeah. bleaches it back to just clear quartz. Clear quartz, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you linger, when you just leave it out there marinating, when you just <laughs> ruminate over it. Mm -hmm all the power, all the healing, and you just drain it all out. Yeah. And yeah, you have the unconditional love again, which is beautiful and wonderful, mm -hmm. but you came here for more than that. We came here to have exponential lives. We came here for violet ray lives. Mm -hmm. We came here to be healed, healthy, yeah. happy, whole, and complete, transmute all of it. Get us out of that dense energy, heal all of that. We came here to heal all of this. And whether your, your twin is passed or not, you still, you still can do all of this because the universe is not going to leave you without a way to have, no. have a violet flame life. No. This is the age of the violet flame. It, it's not. And even when my twin passed away, you know, I didn't understand it at the time back then after he passed away. You know, he told me that he had a chance to come back, but he did not. And that just still rings hard to me today because I'm like, so much that we have grown together in the spiritual aspect, so much we have transmuted, so much healing that we have brought together on this planet that we are studying doing. So I get why he's, because he was able, he was on the other side, he was able to see the other timelines. He was able to understand that if I left, then we can do this more exponential. So some twin flames are here for the physical tactile together. Some twin flames are here. So we're, just think about it. We're here to live out different aspects of this model it's a model you have from point a to point b it's different pathways along that model look at it as a movie it's different scenes to that script and so some twins are going to be here they're going to live out this experience together i know some twins that are with their twins having a beautiful experience working through energies some twins you know have not got to that energy of being able to come together yet and some twins have lost their twin but regardless of where you are on your journey if your twin is not here, if you're with your twin, or if your twin is, is here and you're not together, you're still meant to hold your frequency. Hold your frequency. Hold your frequency. Have the best life you can have. Be who you are. And, of course, we're lit up to be with our twin. We're driven to be with our twin. But if something happens that we can't be with our twin, the universe is going to give you a beautiful life. Yeah. And just remember, to right now, this time, Whatever belief you have, whatever you have, whatever about the sun or whatever else, whatever, just don't go into anything fear-based. People have been asking me, have been asking me what to do. Okay, they're getting freaked out, what to do. And I'm like, don't freak out. What have you been doing? If you've been keeping yourself in energetic vibration, if you've been doing all those things, do the same things you've been doing. And if you have not been doing those things, start doing those things. You should be doing those things anyway because it brings out a better, whole, healthier version of you anyway. And that's what we came here to experience. No one loves being depressed. No one loves being sad. No one loves being all those things. We know because those energies does not vibrate with the unconditional love of who we are. Nobody wants what this used to represent. This used to represent the burden of an unhealthy mind. An overburdened mind, an overburdened physical system, an overburdened emotional system, an overburdened spiritual system, an overburdened individual all by themselves. That's what this card used to represent. And now, you know, I was shown, you know, that's not what it is at all. Now it's to get rid of this, let the light in, let it ground, let it ground and take those burdens away and give you the life we came here to have. We this full, whole, and complete light being, which you are. Mm -hmm. You are that light being. There's no separation. We. 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 Yeah, sometimes even when I'm doing meditations, um, I remember when I, when it first started, my higher self started saying, say we. Say we. we. I say we. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I've been saying we too. Yeah, we. We, because because me, I, it separates us. We. We're one and the same. We. We're we. one and the same. Yeah. 
I even have a like a Sheldon and Amy. I have a chamois for <laughs> a chamois <laughs> for you know good yeah. cool yeah. name for my you know yeah. music course here. But yeah, you know, um, yeah, claim who you are. I am constantly getting the card about um, walk in the truth of who you are. Mm -hmm. Walk. In, I, I did a meditation the other night with. Um, two other ladies and we all three of us got cards about standing in your truth of who you are. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even get into, we didn't even get into what that was about. That was about sacral chakra healing. And we're at an hour and a half now, girl, that's going to be next week. I know that's be next week. So I know we didn't even get there. The sacral chakra healing is a huge thing that we are all being guided to do for the world. And so, yeah, we need to cover that next yeah, week. Yeah, sure. We will definitely cover that next week. Cause I have some stuff to say about that. I've been feeling some energies collectively doing work yes girl me too i mean i was i was leading a vibrate leading a vibration leading a meditation and got hijacked by the orions in the middle of the meditation it was like sorry to interrupt here but this is what we want you to do and i'll be that gun we had to backtrack and, and redo something because they wanted us to they wanted us to add that in and it's like okay lady sorry but you know and they're like the power of three the three of you together this is what we want you to do and so so yeah, it's, and then talk to you and you're like, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. And I'm like, okay. And then, yeah. So then I go looking back at the people I follow. Cause you know, I don't look until yeah. I went back and look and sacral this, sacral that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all doing it. So yeah. as always, the, it's, in our, it's, it's in our collective. It's in within our group we resonate with. That's mm -hmm. what we are. It's what we're here to do, which, which I've been talking it for a while now and, and you've been talking it too. So it's mm -hmm. not good, but we circled back to it. I'm sure. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. So this is a wonderful episode. I know it's a long one, but I mean, I know. I mean, it, it was it was much needed because there's a lot of stuff out there and a lot of stuff going on. So it, it was much needed, and I am, and we all brought it back in because everything is connected. As above is below, the twin flame journey, your individual journey, twin flame journey brings you back to th thyself. Um, so everything is connected. Just hold your frequency. Continue to do the things that you need. If you need help with that, that's what I'm here for. I'm a spiritual mindset and empowerment coach. I help my clients to be able to work through these different energies within them, whether it's healing individually or even their twin flame union. Absolutely. Yes. And of course, I have the nonprofit. We are doing um, Thursday nights. We are doing live intuitive meditations. Um, I pull some cards, get the feel for the energy and then um, lead a meditation based upon that energy. Um, I'm also doing private intuitive meditations with mm -hmm. people. So mm -hmm. very happy to do that. So anybody wants to reach out for that. And, and we'll have those links in the bio. Oh, okay. Yes. And um, on the 21st, I think it is, a third, mm -hmm. the 21st, I'm going to do the behavioral styles workshop, which explains how to understand people's behavioral style, but how to see it's not so you can get them to do what you want them to do, but so you can see, okay, we're not jihawing and this is how that shows me how I'm what mm -hmm. I need to do with me. Mm -hmm. it shows me mm -hmm. how I'm mirroring, okay, I see mm -hmm. what I need to heal in me. Has nothing to do with fixing them. Mm -hmm. We can't fix somebody, nor does it mean mm -hmm. somebody needs fixed. Mm -hmm. That our behavioral styles are different, but the way I interact with them is showing me I need to fix this in me. I need to heal this in me, not even fix, but I need mm -hmm. to progress this in mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And so so yeah, that's the twenty first, um, and so yeah, we'll have those links down there. Yeah, as yeah. always, girl, I love Twin Flame Tuesdays. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Takes out, girl. You guys have a wonderful day. Keep your vibration high. Make sure you drink plenty of water. I Make know. sure you're exercising, taking care of your physical vessel, your mental vessel, um, your spiritual vessel. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. And I love you guys. Peace and love, my Twin Flame, my spirit guides. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Hold on.